captain, and today I am joined by the able-bodied seaman that is Ross Bailey of Yamaha. Morning. Um, I've known Ross for a while now. Ross has worked for a few different companies that we've dealt with over the years, but um, now he's with Yamaha, I hear, because the maternity pay is better. Uh, anyway. And more time off. More time off. So, who's heard of this? Who's heard of this? What have we got? Tell me. THR. Uh, the new THR heads. So, dual channel, single channel. Um, and they're great. <laughs> it's and like, they're great. And that's the end of the video. And the, yeah, they're awesome uh, and they do lots of things, uh, but really easy to use. Uh, it, it, very, very simple range, these two heads. There's a dual channel, there's yeah. a single channel. Uh, the dual channel is literally two times the single channel, so very, very easy. Good thing about this is they're super, super easy to use. Um, the, the, the channel thing is an interesting one because they're not channels, they're amps. Yeah. So both amps are identical. You know how to use this straight out of the box. Yeah. Okay, So you've got five different amp models, regular amp controls on the back panel. Uh, you see different tube selections, topology, so class A or AB for each amp. Um, and that's sort of something that I keep scooting over and I shouldn't do. These, this is two completely independent amps right. in one box. So yeah. you've got their own input, their own output, um, their own effects loop, their own tube uh, selection topology, yeah. their own DI output where you can load in uh, impulse responses. Uh, the head is 100 watts, switchable down to 50 and 25. Um, and it's, you know, it's quite a departure. It's, yeah, it, it's, the, um, I think when, I, when you first, uh, one of the guys at Yamaha gave me the heads up that there was going to be a new THR a little while ago. And, and it, you could tell that the sort of the internet rumors had got out and absolutely everybody just assumed that the fantastic THR5 and THR10 home use guitar amplifiers were going to get a facelift. And everybody was very excited because, of course, THR10 and THR5 have been, you know, hugely popular army of fans. Absolutely. And they were going, oh, 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 I'm going to get a new, better version of that. So I guess the initial sort of thing of like, well, here it is, is there's, there's been a little backlash of like, oh, a bit disappointed because I thought I was going to get. But I guess, you know, you've got to just go, well, look, that's fine. The good news is, uh, is that, you know, everybody with a THR10, you don't have an obsolete product, you know, and everybody that's looking at buying a THR10 but was thinking, oh, I'll just wait and see. You don't have to wait anymore. You know that, you know, THR10 is here. Um, I have one. Uh, Chappers, I forget if he has a THR10 or a THR5, but, we're, you know, ton, everybody you know has got one of these little amps, so they're great. But, so this is really upscaling, and even then, so the next surprise is you think, well, surely if they're going to do a gigging THR amp, it's going to be a modeling amp with digital effects in it and blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of not that at all either, is it? it it's not that, but it, th there's elements of that as well. So uh, we still have the VCM modeling preamp, yep. okay, uh, which helped make THR so successful was the feel and the dynamics of it. You still have that. Um, I suppose backpedaling a little bit, uh, this was... Uh, 2012 I think we started working on this and you kind of you know you, you talk to people you do a bit of research what do people want we want a bigger louder yeah. THR yeah that was definitely people wanted to gig with their THR didn't they exactly yeah. but I, I guess just doing a THR 10 but bigger would have been a little bit boring you know it, there's there's nothing different about that there's comparable products yeah uh, taking the vcm out of it of course so you know you start brainstorming you come up with ideas of what's cool well dual amps are cool so we we, we build that well, in let, let's let's i think people love to hear stuff yeah other than me talking um, so i think what we'll do just to start off with because i love the dual thing so i'm yeah. going to kind of come back to that in a minute i think that's a super like 2015 buzz thing that everybody should get into but let's just use it as it, a single channel single amp kind yes. of let's have a look so obviously the one we're using is, is here i have another one on my lap here uh, and if we just go through some of the basic kind of clean to to, to modern tones some with a little bit of gain some without uh, and just get some tones, and then I'll explain a little bit later as well about how the 212 cab works. Um, and an important thing to point out with the modeling is uh, you can definitely dial in, you know, classic amp sounds that you would recognize, but the the, the concept behind this, don't yeah. emulate, create, it's about making your own don't sound. Don't emulate, create, kids. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, on what, what which amp, which output setting have you, have you chosen for this 
Um, so should we just fiddle around with all of them? We can absolutely fiddle around with all of them. So amp one we have set to clean currently. Uh, if we just switch to solid, uh, solid is a solid state clean. Well, let's start with solid state. Uh, so it is super, super clean. <laughs> Classic Roland Jazz Chorus. Anyway, so let's go clean. Clean. By the uh, way, that chorus pedal is not built into the amplifier. That's on my pedal board on the floor, which we'll come back to shortly. Absolutely. So it's um, clean. So the clean is more of a tube yeah. kind of clean, classic American uh, thing. The tube setting on the back, by the way, we're on class A, B, and 6L6 tube. So quite like twin esque, I suspect. <laughs> More dynamic than the yeah. solid. Yeah, it is. It's got all that sort of life and cat. It's yep. got that. What we, you know, everybody says, what's the difference between solid state and valve? And you try and describe it, and you end up going, you just come up with stupid words. But that's the basic <laughs> kind of difference, isn't yes. it? Yes. Exactly. Uh, crunch. Crunch. More of a, uh, uh, a, a lower gain. Okay. Should we stay with six L sixes, or do you want to just stay with six L sixes? Put it on uh, EL eighty fours, or well, in fact, well, the crunch is actually a good model to do that on. Okay. Um, you can certainly hear the differences a bit more pronouncedly. Let's do that. Is that even another word? Probably. Okay. Well, it is now. So that's six L sixes. Let's go to six V sixes. Compressed and darker. Yeah, uh, EL 84, so yeah. we should hear a little bit of low end roll off, a little bit more sparkle on the top end. If you're wondering what Ross is doing by fiddling behind the amplifier, yeah. he's just doing, he's just changing these. Dead easy. There we'll we keep are. the, uh, we'll keep it on class, class AB. Okay. Uh, so this is KT88. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll skip over the 606. We're done there. Uh, yeah. So EL34. So all that without right. even touching the yeah, UQ. Didn't, didn't touch the amp. So. Let's move on to lead, just to give people a bit of an idea of what that might sound like. Lead, not actually that dissimilar to crunch tonally, um, but you just get more gain. Nice quick little run through there. Um, we've got this relatively quiet in the room, haven't we? Sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what would I say? Sort of loud home practice rather than anything yeah. louder than that. Um, now, this is the bit I like. This is the bit I like, and I like the fact that Yamaha have nailed this. And it's funny, really, because at the beginning of this year, I was, uh, you guys who watch a lot of these will know I'm great friends with, with Rabir and Rabir. Um, had just done a, a, a little amp project with another amp brand. But anyway, whilst we were, whilst he was trying to replicate his tone with another amp brand, it came, kind of became apparent that the fatness of Rabir's tone was because he had two different amplifiers running into two different speakers and they worked, um, uh, they both sounded okay on their own, but together sounded immense. 
and it wasn't about stereo. So I think this is yeah. this isn't about having stereo, although Rabir does use some of that stuff. This and you is can just, do that as well. Yeah, this is just about having two amps complementing each other. And then, of course, when you think about it, when you see almost uh, most of the like the guitar gods, when you think of the sort of the Joe Bonamassas and the John Mayers and you know the, and the Eric Johnsons, and you know, yeah, you realise that actually they've all been doing that for years. You know, they've all had two multiple amps. Absolutely. So the kind of clever thing here is. And, and of course, the challenge is you can have modeling things that say, oh, well, I'm going to make it sound like two amps blended into one. But the bottom line, if that sound comes out the same speaker, so the speaker is kind of going, look, I can only do one thing. I can't yeah. do two things. It never sounds the same as if you've got two discrete speakers doing their thing. And you can actually do that with this, uh, with, with with the THR two twelve cabinet. Yes, you've got options of going in uh, and using both speakers at the same time. So this, in its simplest form, can just be a regular two channel head, um, as we've got it running at the moment. And one is going to that speaker, and two is going to that speaker. Um, so you that's know, why you we've get got that it, separation. That's why we've got it mic'd up sort of at each speaker separately. So actually, the, the, the sounds that you just heard uh, that Ross was playing through when we did the run through is only using one of the speakers in the amplifier. And it's not until we engage this, um, you know, the, the, in fact, I can't do it. Can I do it off here? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not until we engage both amps and then both speakers start getting used. And that's when it all becomes kind of, you start going, ah, oh, I kind of see why actually I've just got a complete duplicate of everything underneath because I may want two of the same yeah. preamp tonal amps, but just perhaps set with different gain structures. I'm on, I might want a different pedal through one and a different, you know, I mean, it, I guess some of that gets a bit over the top, but the, the general idea is, and the minute Ross, you know, does the, well, here's what both amps sound together, all of a sudden you just go, that makes total sense. This is why this amplifier is um, credi credible, incredible, credible, I think, and just, and different, you know, it's like that here is a, a, a single amp and a single speaker cabinet that is actually two amps and two speaker cabinets. So very portable um, and it sounds great. So let, let's just do a, let's do that layered thing. So even if we take two sounds, so we're going to take a, a, a crunch on one amp and a lead on the other amp, or did you want to do a clean and a crunch? Well, let's do both actually. So if we set that up like that and get something, hopefully. <laughs> So that's so, one amp, isn't it? Let's hear just the other amp. And even in the room, and I don't know what it would sound like on YouTube, but in the room, you know, there's a, there's a there is a sort of a thinness that you would perhaps associate with perhaps a one by twelve amplifier, or maybe even perhaps because it's not valve. I don't know, but there's a, there's a certain sort of you're you're going. That's yeah, a nice sound, but I should say, can you can I have a bit more? Yeah. And then it, and then it's like. So perhaps I shouldn't have talked. So do the two, just go clean. So chat amp one, amp two, and then hit the the two, the two, and and hopefully you'll be able to see on on here when both lights light up, you'll know. Yep. We'll hear because it'll just sound great. So, so amp one, amp two. Gives you the three D thing. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. I hope it comes out uh, in YouTube, like uh, in YouTube land. Um, sometimes some of the more subtle things we do in here perhaps are harder to hear when people are just listening through speakers on iPhones and stuff like that. But it's it's got that extra mm, something. Um, so now again, none of this is really programmable. There are there are tiny weeny elements of programmability in there, aren't there? But but your yeah. basic Pan, you know, there's no there's no preset patches. You can't go. Oh, I'm gonna. You know, this is what this does and that. It's so, and that to an extent, I guess, is going to be good and bad because you're going to get the guys that go, well, that's brilliant because I just want it to work like a, my old amps that I own at home. And there'll be other guys that are going, oh, I, you know, I quite like the idea of having 99 different presets and patches. But it is what it is. Um, the reverb is built in. Uh, that's an SPX reverb as well, and you've got ooh. four different reverbs. So that is one of the programmable things. Four well, different reverbs. Four things. Four different reverbs. So, so we say programmable, but of course, what 
we mean by that is you would uh, plug in your laptop to this, choose and program the reverb that you like if you like, and then that's it, it's set, it just becomes that reverb. So it doesn't change depending on what you do over here or anything, does it? Exactly, and, and, and we're really going for, like I said earlier, something that you know how to use, and yes, you have some extra options when you rig up to a PC or a Mac. Mm. Um, with the reverbs, the booster, you can select three different boosters as well. We haven't talked about booster yet, have we? Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll cover Let's that do later, it. shall we? Okay. Um, uh, well, but yeah, your, your reverbs, so you've got spring, hall, plate, and room, um, yeah. and they're straight out of our SBX units. Yeah, so, so pretty pro reverbs. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about the booster. So yeah. the, the booster is essentially a built-in, um, here it is here, uh, it is has a different level for each channel, um, so effectively when you switch the booster on, you could conceivably be driving amp one very hard and amp two not very much, uh, or not at all if you really don't yeah. want to. Um, and you can turn the booster off as well, so if you want. One amp can be boosted exactly. and one amp not. And you said what, it's a, it, there's essentially a tube screamer, there's a, I know uh, you're not allowed to say these words, so I'll say them, tube screamer, um, just whisper it. A, um, a, a, a very small amp. A micro amp, yes. Uh, and for the people that like their pedals full of tone uh, oh, and are very OCD about it, right? Um, okay, something like that. anyway. So look, oh, so so and what what I what I've actually got on the board. Actually, we talk about full tone because I love full tone pedals. I've got a full tone plimsoll on Great. the board. So what we'll do is we'll we'll get a couple of sounds and show you what the inbuilt booster does um, that's in the amplifier and how it affects the how it sort of fattens up the tone, uh, and then we'll just use some regular pedals. I've got my uh, EP Boost on the floor, which I absolutely love. I think kind of makes any, it's, they should just call that the make anything sound better pedal. And then the Plimsoll, which is a proper drive pedal. Uh, they sound I'll great. Do. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. If we set this up something like a, uh, a, a good pedal platform amp. Yeah. Uh, with options, so. Uh, so channel one, uh, very American, yeah. clean kind of. Six or sixes, channel two. Have we scary. got just just to be sort of completely anal? Can we have uh, EL thirty fours on channel two and six or sixes on channel one? You can. I actually put it on EL thirty fours, but flick of a switch. Uh, uh, EL sorry, KT eighty eight. So I put it on. I put on EL thirty fours on one, and then, then six or sixes have on it. the other. Thank you. Cool. So at one. Excuse the clams. Just edge of break up. It just needs one other thing to just make this this next level up one more. Can you just use? Can you just plug this guitar in? <laughs> yes. Hurrah! Nothing wrong with that guitar. Of course, it's a great guitar, but um, this is beautiful. This is, this is, you know, this is a classic. Every, you know, it's good to use a Les Paul, I think, in videos because people can reference that against yeah. perhaps a guitar that they might own. Absolutely. So, um, so let's. So we got. So, so both amps together. As you break up. And then, uh, so hit the so hit the booster in halfway yep. through playing or something if you want. So um, on amp one, uh, in fact, let's do that in individually. So amp one, I've got it set up for the amber booster. Um, oh, okay. Which uh, is is um, the micro amp. No, no, the, uh, the tube OCD. The OCD. Yeah. Which isn't amber. It's cream color, isn't it? I'm colorblind, oh so um, this all, all this legal, you know, political correctness, where it's like, you know, we've blatantly copied something, but we just won't say where it is. I don't know why you should say where it is, but I think um, we, well, I think we can tell you it's a model of a. Yes, you can absolutely say model it's a, yes, of it's, it. it, and it's completely dis unconnected and a different company, and they may say it sounds nothing like it, and that's entirely up to them. But you know, whatever. Well, the good thing about this is because it's one knob. Yes, you can select which one you choose from, but it's just one knob, right. so it's kind of a level and a gain in one. Basically, a more knob. There we go. So. <laughs> Do you have like your own Facebook page for lessons and stuff like that? Yeah. You, just like lessons and stuff. No. you don't do any lessons or anything like that, mate? Gigging much? Yes. 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 Yes, you're a very good player. You and Paul Hindmarsh, you are my two favourites. Who's I got another one? I like I like I like Peter Norey. I like Adam Best actually as a player as well, but Adam always refuses to be on camera. So there you go, shout out to Adam Best. Adam you're, Best you're, is yes, a legend. You're very good. You're very good. I I, I like your playing. <laughs> no. <laughs> no you. Um, so the booster goes from uh, the more knob goes from. And that's on the clean sound. That's Ooh. on the clean.
rain sound. Woo! Uh, on the dirtier. So this is the the green booster. Yes. Uh, and it does that thing that you lose a little bit of low end. Yeah, I um, that. A little but, bit mid. But of course, I guess when you combine that with the other sound, it's gonna doesn't matter, does it? It's Absolutely. Gonna... Wind that up. And combine the two. So look, let's do a direct comparison really behind, uh, so let, let, give me a clean sound, so which I think we've got. And just hit the boost drum. Okay, turn the booster off. And now let's just try it with an EP boost. And we'll just get, a, so here we go. Put your booster back on. I mean, the EP boost puts bass end in. It's, it does do that, and yeah. obviously the tube screamery type thing that you've got going is taking a bit of bass end away. But you're, that was the, uh, the, was the OCD, OCD model. But yeah. you're not. You don't really sit there going, "Oh, one sounds like a digital amp that I've turned on and off, and the other sounds like a pedal." They both, you know, they just both sound like good sounding different pedals. Yeah, one's My, a gain box as well, so I mean, probably the closer one would be something like so, the Plimsoll. Let's try the Plimsoll because this is just a monster pedal. It so let, let's play clean for a second. <laughs> Just needs a bit Great. more, just needs more, a little bit more, do it again. More. So, I think that's that's important that we just sort of demoed that because it's kind of like, uh, it's always a question of, you know, do, do is it possible for um, non-valve amplifiers to, to, to sort of accept pedals yeah. quite the same way that a valve amp does? And I guess, you know, it's incredibly difficult to, to sort of uh, emulate all the nuances that you know a pedal into a tube into a tube power amplifier is going to sort of do but I, I I really didn't I really don't sit here kind of going oh yeah actually my pedals come alive much more into a tube amplifier than they do into this you know they, 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 they sound like they sound if you plug them into a tube amplifier you know it's pretty cool and a, a huge amount of that I think is because of the yeah. VCM uh, sort of modeling in this it's it, you know it's component modeling mm. so every last component is modeled and reacts the way you would expect yeah. it to react so if you dime the front end with something really loud yeah. it compresses just like a good tube yeah. amp it, it's a little bit weird mm. <laughs> I think I think it's probably fair to say for the sort of the tube amp lovers out there um, you know, the last year or two with, with products from whether it's Kemper or, or, or Yamaha or Line 6 or whatever, or Axe Effects, you know, there, there's, you're, almost, you're sort of getting to that point where you're splitting hairs between the difference of what yeah. does a tube amp sound like versus what do some of these sound like. Certainly, I think you're splitting hairs when it comes to watching a YouTube video or, or, or recording a, a track or something like that. Maybe sitting in the room, you could sit there going, do you know what, there's still a certain, again, this this undescribable something that tube amps kind of do that's almost like, and I suppose the hard thing is with tube amplifiers, sometimes you get five different, you know, five different Marshall JTM 45s and they all sound different anyway. Yeah. So, so kind of like, how do you, how do you even emulate that? Um, but, but I kind of think, you know, you're getting to the point now where for a player, Whereas the attraction before had always been like, well, I, I like the idea of owning an amp like this because because it's super lightweight and, and it does loads of stuff and, and um, it's probably going to be super reliable and yeah. never going to need tubes changing and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, and I accept that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll lose some tone. That, that argument's getting kind of progressively uh, harder, isn't it? It's, but I, I don't think it's quite... Um, there's always going to be... Uh, there's always going to be a player... There's always going to be a part of every player, I think, that goes, do you know what? 
for me to just be ultimately absolutely inspired to just play the best that I possibly can, we're all going to go searching, and some of it might even just be psychological. It just sort of says, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, 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 you know, I've got, I've got to play through the holy grail of all the gear. But I have to say, you know, that there's, it's definitely, definitely getting to the point now where you, where you do sort of think to yourself, um, you're in a function band, uh, yeah. you're doing depths, uh, you're doing lots of home recording, all that kind of stuff. You know, where, where you're sort of thinking, does anybody really care? Um, anymore you know it's uh, only guitar players that care isn't it, it at is. the end of the day it absolutely is and i think if you're doing your own solo material and stuff like that i think it's important that you know I, i'm more talking about if you're sort of regurgitating someone else's material and all that kind of stuff and you, you know I, I can see these kind of amplifiers just being like a, a, just a go-to obvious amp yeah um, well that's the big thing and you you can yes you can put it in the same conversation as Gemper's axe effects yeah of course helix uh, th this is, of course, a very, very yeah. different beast. Completely. It's just an amp. Yeah, I mean, that's what I really like about this. In fact, probably my favourite thing about this is that it isn't programmable. Yeah. And it doesn't have 57 different banks of amp models and effects and everything like that. It, it is... Um, I mean, I suspect if... 90% mm, of people who buy this will not read the manual and we'll get everything out of it that they want to get out of it. And I've got a confession to make. I've not read, You've the, never manual. read the manual I've either. not read the manual yet. Um, and that's um, a great thing, because guitar players, I think, you know, on the, on the whole hate reading manuals. Um, and, I, and I do, I think, I think this is going to start, I think we're going to look back in four or five years' time, in a little bit in the way we all kind of got perhaps slightly obsessed with true bypass and all this kind of stuff and things come along. But I think we're gonna go we're all gonna get sort of educated into this idea now of, of this dual lamp thing. And and yeah. although a lot of the pros use it, I would still say that the bulk of, of um the bulk of, of amateur guitar players, you know, and hobby guitar players that just play for fun, they have one amp. And they will or or they use one amp at a time. Yeah. And they will never experience they'll not even realise that they're missing out. And, and it is a beautiful like thing. It is a well. beautiful thing. Uh, but you get issues with that, not just the lugging things around yeah. and it's probably oh, you're great. Getting, it phasing issues. Phasing and, and earth loop issues yeah. and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I mean if you've got two amps at home, it doesn't even really matter what they are. You could have a really great one and a really crappy one or anything like that. But get an A B Y box or you know, and plug them both in side by side. I guarantee you you'll get tones that you like better than just having one amp on its own. And it's back to that thing of mm. don't emulate, create. Don't, let, let's stop worrying about this sounds like Who a... Who came up with that what? terrible... Was that Mark? Was the, that the, Julian? The, 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 probably Julian. Probably Julian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good lad. Um, don't emulate, create, kids. But he's Sorry. right. Let's stop worrying about... You know, this is supposed to sound like a blah. He's going to come back and take back the THR amp they gave me the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, can't have that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, you know, let's let's make some sounds. Let's just concentrate on playing. So uh, that's that's the whole thing with it. Well, uh, I tell you what, I'm going to show you the back now. Tim yeah. may decide to insert this earlier in the video because we talked about this earlier on. But let's let's show you the back. Again, we're really carrying on from just how simple the front is to use. Amp one, you choose your power amp emulation, choose whether it's class AB or not. Uh, it has an effects loop, uh, and if I'm right in saying it's a stereo effects loop, so you exactly. can have different effects on channel one and channel two, or amp one and amp two, exactly. albeit you have to use Y cable things. Yeah, just a standard insert cable, so stereo um, jack yeah. to two monos. Foot switch. Uh, which isn't MIDI, but uses a MIDI cable. It's standard five-pinned in. Yeah, so kind of on the one hand, you'll be going, oh, that's annoying, because I'd quite like to use a MIDI foot switch to control this with all my, you know, and on the other hand, trust me, I know this because of other amps have done this, when your cable breaks uh, and you're running around music shops trying to find a five-pin cable to get your uh, foot switch, you can use any MIDI cable, which on a lot of amplifiers, despite the fact it's a five-pinned in, it's not a normal MIDI cable, is it? And when I've, they break, you can never find a replacement cable. I've anyway. worked for companies where yes. you have a, a proprietary yes. cable. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, headphone output, speaker outputs, uh, impedance matching switches, output um, volumes. Uh, interestingly, you can't have a different power output for amp one to amp two. They, they have to be matched on here. Yeah. Um, ground lift and, of course, coming on to what we'll demo for you next, if you're still awake, which is the DI output. Uh, oh, and USB. Now, USB, I should say, if you're a current THR10 owner, you will know that your USB output is a recording interface as well as the way you would use the 
editor on your laptop. Um, THR HD and THR H, that USB functionality has been uh, scaled back to just give you access to the editor. So if you want to uh, record direct out from this, uh, the only way to do it is using the DI output or mic it up like we've done there. So whilst we're talking about the um, the five pin, uh, well, what were we talking about that? I can't even remember. We had a bit of an we interlude there. Um, we talked about the direct out. I think we were. So we've gone back to talking about the foot switch. This uh, is included for free when you buy one of these. If you buy the single um, HD100, uh, these two buttons are missing. Uh, and you just get to go, because of course you can't do, you no, know, you can do channel one to two, you can do booster, and you get what, reverb? Uh, on the single channel one, it's uh, booster, reverb, and loop. Booster, reverb, and loop. So there's, yes, uh, so you, yes, of course, because there aren't two amplifiers, are there? So there's no need to switch, yes. So imagine those three buttons, but spaced out in the same size casing. Yep. Uh, so it comes with it. Very it's all board friendly. Very, very, yeah, very, uh, I was thinking that as I had this on the floor next to, next to that one, I was thinking, oh, this would just sit on your pedal board, wouldn't yeah. it? Very cool. Um, and, 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 so we're going to talk about DI. Yes. Balanced outputs, um, and essentially a cabinet emulated with the option to use either the preset sort of cabinet emulation and the amplifier emulation that comes with the software, or load your own impulse responses in. Yeah, you've got a selection sort of in the software. Um, so it's 112s, 212s, 412s, mic'd up in various different ways, uh, assignable per amp. Again, going back to that thing, it's two completely individual amps entirely. Yeah. Yeah. So each amp has its own DI output. Uh, so if you want amp here, one yeah. to be a 212 cab mic'd up with a 57 uh, you know, center, an amp two to be a 412, Mic'd up with a, a, a Neumann off axis or something yeah. like that, you can do that. So, again, like you, you can really dial in your sounds. Well, and you've got a selection, but you can load in, so do a load of loads. I always like to do this, and I, and I, I, I always know that sort of some manufacturers kind of cringe and go, oh, don't make me do this. But I always like to just go, uh, we're recording everything simultaneously. So, we've got this DI'd and mic'd. Uh, so, if you go get your best, best tone in the room. So your two amps and you know, just get it sounding super sweet and beautiful yep. and bluesy and sexy. And then what we'll do whilst we're playing is our able-bodied sound man will just switch from what he's getting into the DI to what he's getting into the mics and we'll just annotate on the screen so you can see what you, you, you'll know. I mean, you'll, you, we use uh, a ribbon microphone, an SE ribbon microphone um, and an SM57. Uh, and the ribbon mics are great. They, they do add a fabulous kind of uh, beautiful, sort of nice round bass and a little bit of room sort of tone in there, which the DI tends not to. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what we could do? And I'll just get a nod from Tim. Of course, what we could do is we could go uh, ribbon mic and 57, just 57 DI, and just rotate that round. Because a lot, of, a lot of you I know at home will just be miking up with a 57. And actually, you might find the DI is perhaps a little bit more uh, closer to the... Although, of course, if you've got the impulse responses of the different mics, who knows? Well, Should I just shut it? up and just get on with it? Well, something to kind of point out there, the impulse response will not be of this cabinet and this speaker in this room. Of course. Of course. So it will sound, it different, will sound different, just to uh, just to put that out there. Yeah. But, like might I said, better. You, you, it might sound better. You might prefer the sound. And certainly, if you're recording, the hell of a lot easier, isn't it, than micing up? Much less faff. And live as well. You know, oh, yeah. that's huge. Um, so you just have the cabinet for your own monitor. Exactly. Live, and then the sound man gets his DI, and then you've got no mics. And or you well, could have the whole lot. I mean, the, the, just to can put. Can you run this with no speakers attached yep. then? So you could literally just turn up, give the sound man the outputs, he gives you the, the, your sound through the fold back, yep. and off you go. Or the, you know, the FRFR setup, you could do that as well. Yeah. So many different options with this amp. It's great. Mm. Mm. Times are changing. <laughs> we just grabbed the Stratomacaster here because I just thought it nice. We use a lot of gain in these videos. I thought it'd be nice to play something clean. Just chill out, you know? Just relax, sit back, kick back, put your slippers on, check this out. <laughs>
Okay, so there you have it. The uh, the wonderful new Yamaha THR HD, which is this one, H, which is this one, uh, cabinets. Uh, I will put links to all these products, um, in, including some of the pedals we've used as well, in the description section below uh, this. Um, I would just like to say again, thank you very much, Ross, and to all the lovely people at Yamaha for sending Ross down. Uh, Ross is going to play out using the uh, THR 100 HD in its dual channel mode with uh, the amazing EP Boost pedal on it and a little bit of delay from an MXR carbon copy using uh, my now famous or infamous uh, heavily modded up Squire Strat uh, and basically Ross is just going to sound... <laughs> Pressure. <laughs>